Hello, today we are continuing the corset series. It's been a little bit since I last made a corset and tested out a pattern for this series. I think the last one was stays actually, but you know. Today I'm gonna to be using Ironia Black's Sonia corset and unfortunately I think she took it off of her website. It's just an underbust corset, so there's probably other patterns out there that will do something similar and she does have a lot of free corset patterns on her website. I don't know if she took it off of her website uh, just because she is like redoing it or maybe she only made it available through her Patreon. I'm not sure. Unfortunately, that is the case. But the things that I do with this pattern and like with making this corset will apply still to many other corset patterns. So hopefully it is still useful to you. Um, sorry that it's not available anymore. <laughs> but before we get started, I wanted to thank the sponsor for today's video, Skillshare. When I was about to finish grad school, my goal was actually to create a lingerie fashion line, and Skillshare has a lot of classes that are really good for business and management. However, today I want to talk about a different kind of class that is more for like mental health and art journaling. I decided to watch a class by Amanda Rich Lee, and she's a YouTuber that I've followed for a while because of her bullet journaling content, but she has created a Skillshare original class called Art Journal for self-care, three exercises for reflection and growth. She gives some prompts to get you started, but she also goes through how you can add your own creativity into your journaling through calligraphy or doodling and generally how she like pieces everything together, but also kind of goes with the flow. I thought it would be an interesting class to show you guys kind of the different side of Skillshare, not just like the business or the fine arts or like skills specifically. You can also use Skillshare a lot for mental health and wellness. And I find that really super helpful because that is more of an area that I struggle with sometimes. <laughs> but if you are interested in trying Skillshare, the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a one month free trial and I really highly recommend them. So with that, let's get back to the corset. I think the first thing that we're doing is the fitting. Okay, so immediately I can tell that this is not small enough. Not doing much for compression. It's pretty much just like on my body and it's completely closed. So. Um, this definitely needs to be decreased in size. So I think first off, two inches needs to come off the whole thing just so that I have a two inch lacing gap. I actually kind of like how not compressed at all the hips are. I think the hips fit really well as long as there's a lacing gap eventually. Also, it's got white down the middle because this whole thing is gonna get flatlined to a different fabric and I was out of black twill. So I've been out of black cotille for ages. I am also now out of black twill. I'm just kind of pinching this shut and I'm able to do that just with my hands. So it's definitely <laughs> too large. I think the two inches obviously from the lacing gap, but then an extra, maybe an inch or two just for the fit would be good. So that's a total of like four inches, three, four inches off of the waist and the under bust area. Other than that, I really like the shape. I think it's a cute shape and I think it will do what I wanted it to do once this is all like the right size. So I think we're gonna have to do another fitting after I make these alterations. I will see you guys after I've made these alterations and we'll do another fitting eventually. I wanna take off a full two inches all the way around on everything to give me that two inch lacing gap. So that means I want to take one inch off on the half. I think I'm gonna leave the side seam where it is and I'll do that off of each of these four seams here. So between the front center, front middle, and front side, and between the back side, back middle, and back center. I'm gonna take an eighth off of each side of each seam, so. I'll take an eighth off of here, an eighth off of here, eighth off of here, eighth off of here, so on and so forth. And that will then equal a quarter inch at each seam because there's then four seams that I'm gonna be taking off. So one, two, uh, three, four. That will give me a quarter times four, so that's one inch. And that's gonna be my base alteration was that I wanted to take two inches off all the way around on every like section just so I can get a full two inch lacing gap. Once I'm done with that, then I'm also going to be taking quite a bit off of the waist and the underbust area. So that alteration will only come from about here. When I was originally cutting this pattern, I cut for a size E on the top and an F through the hip. I think that maybe I should have just cut a full size smaller or maybe two sizes smaller on the top and that would have given me a better fit. And then a one size smaller on the bottom. Okay, so this looks very silly, but because this is an underbust corset and this chemise is fairly 
transparent. I'm gonna just wear my sports bra over it so that I don't get struck down by the YouTube monetization gods. I think that this fit looks really good now. I am really happy with it. It's got a nice two inch lacing gap. The hips are maybe a little bit too big still, but I think that it's okay. Once it has its own actual lacing, rather than like this sad lacing panel <laughs> kind of stitched on there, I'll be able to spread it a little bit more evenly. Under bust area and the waist look really good, so I'm happy about that. Maybe I'll take in just a tiny, tiny bit at the hips, but I also like, I like this shape a lot, so maybe I won't. I don't know. I might let out the waist a little bit because it's a little bit dramatic for what I want, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> I think the fit at the rib cage is like pretty near perfect because I'm not getting any like muffin topping over there with like my flesh spilling out, so that's good. Uh, and if I was, then I could just let it looser, a little bit looser in the top as well. So that would have been fine. But I think the way that it is right now is like really good. I just need to be conscious of not pulling the binding too tight because that's kind of where I get into trouble sometimes where you want to pull the binding so it's taut at the top, like especially if you're using something that's not a stretch, which you should if you're making corsets. I bind in a cotton satin ribbon frequently, so when I do that, I pull it taut. Sometimes I pull it a little too tight because I'm a little aggressive in it, but you want to pull it taut so that this doesn't stretch out as you wear it. But yeah, I think this looks really good. I really, I like the silhouette from pretty much every angle. I think that looks good. From the side, it looks nice. I guess maybe I could take it in a little bit here so it doesn't bow out as much. I could also stick a flat steel in here instead of the spiral here and that will help keep this a little bit more rigid rather than giving the like Victorian belly. <laughs> Not that it's very much because this busk is pretty rigid, but just something to make note of. The front silhouette, great, love it. It's very dramatic, maybe a little bit too dramatic, uh, potentially. I might take in just this side seam a little teeny tiny bit at the hip. So it gives more of a smooth angle rather than the kind of like pipe stem look. The like three quarter angle looks really good or one quarter, I don't know, um, side angle looks good. This also I think looks good or at least it will look good once I don't have the lacing panels on there. It's kind of obscuring that back angle there. Yeah, you can kind of see it there and I think that looks really good. And then from the back it also looks pretty good. Because the lacing gap is kind of weird, it's a little wobbly especially on this side here. And that's partially because of it not actually being fully connected to the corset. Like it's stitched where you can see this black line of seaming, but on this side, it's not stitched at all. So it is a little bit wobbly because it's not fully integrated into the corset. But I think that I could take in the hip a little bit just so that this is a more even lacing gap. So only the alteration that I'm gonna make now is to take in this hip a tiny bit. I'm gonna pin that just like from here to here. So starting just below the waist, I wanna smooth out that line to the edge. So this pin here will just help me make a note of that because I like how it looks from here. I just want this to be smoothed out a little bit. I'm not gonna do another fitting because it is a really small alteration and it's not a fit issue. It's more of a silhouette issue and if it doesn't, get completely resolved, it's not gonna like affect the fit, it's not gonna make it, I don't know, it's not gonna be a big deal. So I'm just gonna do that and go straight into the actual corset now. It's been a while since I last worked on this. I think I did this fitting, I don't know, multiple months ago. So getting back into it, I just did a quick fitting to make sure everything still looks right. I think whatever alterations I decided I wanted to make back when I did the last fitting are still correct. Um, the only thing I think I might do, I want the bottom part of the lacing gap to be smaller, so I'm gonna just take some off the hips, I think. Yeah. Hopefully that's what I said I was gonna do a while ago. I'm gonna take this apart and just double check it against my pattern pieces, though if this stretched out a little bit I wouldn't be too surprised because this is not like the most stable uh, fabric to use for corsets.
For the outer part of the corset, I'm gonna be using a cotton sateen. This does stretch on the cross grain, so I'm gonna be cutting it all sideways instead. Normally you'd cut with a grain parallel to the selvage, however, because I don't want this to be stretching around the corset because it's a corset, I'm gonna cut everything with the grain, uh, like the grain perpendicular to the selvage so that it doesn't have this kind of stretch. And the reason that I'm using this fabric is because I wanted some kind of cotton and I'm out of cotton twill, but the sateen has like that nice sheen to it that just like a quilting cotton wouldn't. So that's what I'm using for this. I also thought of maybe using a black matte satin, but I couldn't find any in my stash. Whereas I do have this and I'm not going out to buy more fabric for this. So that's what we're doing. So I'm gonna cut this out and it's all gonna be like sideways so the salvage will be like the top of my fabric.
really happy with how this corset turned out. I, I really don't have any complaints about it actually. Weird. Um, I think it fits super well. I think everything sewed together very well. I was a little bit stressed towards the end because I really used all of my spiral boning caps on this project, I but I ran out. I don't have any more left, so I need to order some more. <laughs> but I was really happy with how everything turned out. I think it looked great. I like am very happy with the hip spring and with just the patterning in general. I'm really sorry that uh, the pattern is no longer available. I'm really sorry, guys, about that. I wish it was. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's on her Patreon. I will go look through her Patreon, and if it is on there, then I will link to that in the description. If not, maybe I'll see if I can find some alternatives that look like they would be as good. That's not to say like this pattern was perfect immediately. Like I did have to make some alterations as you do with most corset patterns that are just made for whatever standard sizing. I definitely was not able to just use it in one standard size. I had to make some adjustments. That's just kind of something that you're gonna have to do with every corset pattern. So maybe another one will be just as good. Um, but generally I really do like Arnea Black's patterns a lot every single one I've used has been good. None of them have been so glaringly wrong that I haven't been able to use them properly and like they've all made courses that I would continue wearing in the future. Some of the stays patterns that I used were not the best uh, and all of them, I think almost all of them, had at least one big problem, uh, whether that was like Red Threaded ha had some problems with her truing or the Ralph Pink stays I think just did not fit correctly at all and like all of them, the the tabs are just kind of a pain which like of course is not relevant with corsets at all but patterns that I've used for stays have had some kind of issues um whereas all of RNA Black's patterns have been great. I do have one more pattern of hers that I will be trying out. It's for a Victorian riding corset so I'm excited to do that one as well but I am really happy with how this one turned out. was a little concerned um because I started this project so long ago that I was not gonna like remember where I had left off or like what changes I had made but but it went fairly smoothly because I stopped at a good stopping point and because I had made the pattern alterations before I took that long break. So if you need to take a long break from something, make your alterations first, like fix your pattern, do all of that, and then when you go to like recut stuff, then it'll make your life a little bit easier. So definitely do that. I've said in the past that you shouldn't use bias tape for binding. That is a lot more relevant when you have a lot of areas going through the bias because this corset was very flat on the top because it's an underbus corset. I guess it's not completely flat. It has the front part goes through a bias. But I was less worried about that front part because that's not where most of the strain is happening. Most of the strain is probably gonna happen around the side of my body. Those areas were all pretty flat and really the only like big areas of bias was that very front point. So I wasn't too concerned about that. So I ended up using bias binding. If you do want to extra make sure, you can stick a strip of twill tape or if you want it to be really thin, um, the salvage off of Silk Organza is a really good stabilizer for keeping everything very not stretched out. So that's a good thing to use. I think that I did not do a true bias. I think I did, like, I didn't do the complete 45 degree angle bias. I think I stuck it on a less steep angle. So that also helps. That means it won't stretch out as much. It will still stretch out some and it has enough of a bias that it went through all the curves really nicely, but that's another alternative that you can use. For the boning, I mean, like, it, it was fine. Like I mentioned before, I was kind of running out of everything, so that was stressful, but if you have all of the materials you need, that shouldn't be a problem for you. So, you know, have the appropriate materials. Someone mentioned in the comments of a previous video that they always have problems with corsets because they make their hips hurt after wearing them for a long time. The way that you can fix that is by giving yourself more room in the hip. Uh, so I have to give myself quite a bit of room in the hips because I have very wide set hips. No matter how much weight I gain or lose, I just have like the bones themselves are fairly wide set. So I'm never going to be able to get like narrow hip shape physically will not work with my body. So I do have to usually use a larger size for my hips and then I can narrow in the waist quite a bit. So that does make it look a lot more dramatic. It, it does mean that like any kind of more straight up and down corsets i can't i can't wear them they are not comfortable they don't fit me properly and uh, if your hips are hurting every time you wear a corset the hip on your corset just needs to be larger but i was able to get a very good amount of waist reduction in this uh because i did give a really generous hip spring so i don't have any pressure on my hips 
all of the pressure goes in on my waist. I, I don't know, I find that really interesting how different bodies need different accommodations for their corsets to make them fit comfortably or fit at all. Or um, if you do have a really well-fitting corset, you can get a lot more waist reduction than if you have one that doesn't fit in your hips because you're not fighting against how much space your hips need. This was a fairly smooth project, even aside from like that big gap that I took and everything fits really well. I don't know, there's not that much to talk about. I guess I just rambled on quite a bit. I'm gonna end the video here. Uh, and thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to try out Skillshare for yourself, the first 1,000 people to click the link in my description will get a one month free trial. And I definitely recommend that they, if you're learning to sew, they have really good resources for sewing. And if you wanna learn other things, they've got resources for that too. That's my video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. Uh, I'm happy to talk to you guys and answer any questions or take any advice that you have. If you wanna see uh, future projects of mine or more corset videos, like for one, let me know, but also subscribe. I do quite a few corset videos on this channel because I am on a mission to try every corset pattern ever created, kind of. <laughs> It's a good database for myself as well as for everybody else. So I've kind of made it my personal goal to build myself this corset and stays database that I can always pull on. And that's it. Okay. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.